my parents and welcome to the introduction to AP IBHL1 chemistry. I am so grateful for the opportunity to teach your kids this year and I'm excited about introducing you to the idea of a flipped classroom. Now you may have experienced flip or your children may have experienced the flipped classroom in physics last year. I do mine a little bit differently as all teachers have a tendency to do. So I'm glad you've taken a couple of minutes and let's move in. Uh, before I do, I, I want to share with you my passion. This is on my website as well and this is truly my heart's desire is loving my students through their journey of learning chemistry and it's for this reason that I dove right into the flipped curriculum because it is so very logical. Let's take a look at what I mean by flipping. What is it that we are flipping? Well, what we're doing is we're taking direct instruction and by direct instruction I'm talking about that time when a teacher would lecture. It's not the only way to teach but it is one of the many ways to teach and direct instruction is when maybe it's complicated and a student needs metaphors or analogies uh, some sort of extra explanation, deeper explanation, or maybe the concepts are mathematical and we need some mathematical modeling in the process of the direct instruction. Now this is what I call a low bar ask. It's doing basically what you're doing right now, which is sitting and listening to me talk with the kiddos it means they're going to be filling in blanks and writing down the examples we cover. Doesn't take a lot of higher order thinking to do that. Uh, now typically we do that with the teacher present, this low bar ask. What flipped now does is it takes the high bar ask of application those times when they're doing homework or you know some sort of synthesizing from their reading or developing models all of those higher order skills of application and evaluation and analysis and we take those skills and typically uh, you know I'm gonna use this word loosely but we almost abandon our kiddos to doing that by themselves now not really because there were tutorials but in a sense they were on their own for a lot of the time now what we're going to do is we're going to do this high bar ask with the teacher present as a mentor, as a consultant, as the one with expertise to help students learn to embrace their own learning. So that's what flipped learning is in a nutshell. Let's take a look at some of the details of what we'll be seeing. Uh, this was pioneered by Jonathan Bergman and Aaron Sams. They were at Colorado, both have now moved on, but are still very active in equipping and enabling teachers to, to do a much better job and to continually seek ways to improve the learning for kiddos in the context of a flipped learning environment. I love this quote. They say, we think the key is for students to identify learning as their goal instead of striving for the completion of assignments. Now, what I like to tell kiddos, and this is my little quick take on this, is they need to embrace their own learning. That doesn't mean that they're all by themselves. It means they need to take that responsibility and that initiative for their own learning. Now, here are some of the advantages of the direct teach at home. What we get is uh, most of the homework now or the work at home, not all of it you'll see, but most of it has a defined time requirement associated with it. You see that movie, that movie says it's seven minutes and 21 seconds. Very defined time frame. Uh, students can listen to the direct teaching in smaller segments typically anywhere from 7 to 12, maybe 15 minutes. I'm trying to make them shorter. But, but here's the key. They're listening in a way that matches their ability to focus, not my drive to complete the information. Students can rewind. Reteaching is at their fingertips. 
one of my students said, you know, Dr. Leggett, uh, when I fell asleep in class, I, I couldn't ask you to reteach, but when I fell asleep at home, I could just rewind you. Um, that's kind of nice because honestly, I don't like my kids falling asleep in my class either. So I'm glad all that's happening in the home environment. Now, another thing that I found, or actually a few of my students found, is that they were able to work ahead as needed. Students that are going on college trips and band trips and athletics uh, can work ahead so they can do time management. Students who may have, know they're having a, a big project due in another class can maybe, you know, front end some of their time with the learning from the videos from my class. So again, it allows students to more comprehensively embrace their own learning. Absent homebound Dillard students have access to the teaching components. Um, I even had a parent watch his videos to help his son for a test. Now, I, I don't expect you to do that, but it was kind of cool that the parent was able to do that. There are so many teachers flipping right now, and there's that means that there's that many more videos available to provide extra learning resources for your child. And I think as parents and guardians, you're able to become a more integral part of your child's learning team. And you're able to do that because you can at least monitor your child whether he or she is watching the videos. You might not know chemistry, it might not have been your forte, um, but you can monitor video watching. And I think that that provides you with a, a better sense that you're able to help your child and love your child through his or her journey of learning chemistry. Uh, application at school. What, what are some of the advantages? The class time is more differentiated. Now, that's a fancy word that we use in education to mean that during the class time, we try to meet each child where that child is in the learning journey, rather than do this shotgun approach and assume they're all learning at the same pace in the same way, we're able to walk around and I'm able to walk around and think about where each child is and find the child to be available for that child when that child hits road bumps. And it's instead of just forging through my lecture. Um, less time is spent on concepts that kiddos readily grasp and that frees up more time for the more difficult application skills. More time is available for struggling kids. I, I talk to almost every child on a daily basis now. That wasn't the case before. I'm walking around, I'm on my feet, I'm checking progress, I'm making myself available, and I'm having conversations and touching base with each and every child. And you know what? I love that positive, interactive environment of the teaching. And it's interactive, not just between myself and my students, but students to students. I see so many students helping one another. We may have a struggling student who is being helped by another kiddo that helps the kiddo learn more effectively, both of them really, the one that's doing the teaching session and the struggling student who's getting that concept retaught in maybe a different way that I didn't think about. Many lectures are instigated uh, at the point where the student is ready to grasp it. So when their mind is ready to embrace a topic, that's when we may stop. And I may say, okay, all the class, let's focus up front for just a moment. Or whoever's having trouble with this concept, come on over to this table and I'm going to go over it. Um, it frees up more time for me. It, it's giving me a chance this year especially, my second year into it, to be more creative and, and more specific in my design in terms of designing learning opportunities that are fixed on or focused upon the actual learning objectives. And as we mentioned, students can collaborate. I hope you can see I'm pretty excited about this. Now, what can you and your kiddo expect out of the class? You're going to be watching some videos of the direct teaching prior to class. Now, I know this is going to sound like a lot, but, but be patient. It's a, it's a great time exchange for your kiddos. For the AP IB class, it's about 45 minutes worth of videos. They're broken into tiny chunks so your child can plan his or her, her time, but it is roughly 45 minutes. Again, be patient. It's not as much as it seems. For my pre-AP kids, it's going to be 30 minutes or less. 
for the pre-AP pre kiddos. For both classes, I provide notes on my website and or print them for kids depending on their needs. But I'm gonna be honest, there is a distinct advantage to taking notes on paper, pre preparation for college especially. But I do wanna forewarn you, this does take the child a little bit longer to take notes that way. But it's definitely an option that I encourage and accept because I do think it has some great learning associated with it. I want to point out that students are not expected to master the material from the videos. The materials, the videos provide a foundation and a framework from which we can uh, begin our application and analysis and the higher level thinking. And they need it there because we will point to it, we will reference it extensively while we're working on the class, what is now the classwork. Uh, students will still have to do pre-labs at home. They are still going to have to do their lab reports at home. And they're still going to be studying for tests at home. Although I did find that because this is paced so well, there was less cramming the night before a test, which I think is a huge win for the kids. I will say there are some students who won't use their time wisely. Embrace their own learning. It's something that the child has to learn. And in those cases, they may have to finish up work at home. And I do have progress checks every day, and I will certainly be touching base with you if it seems to be a habit for some of your kids. There will typically be in the classroom a content quiz. Notice that these content quizzes are after the videos and the application. Remember I said they're not expected to master the material, okay? Uh, after these content quizzes, they will be provided with approximately 70 to 85 minutes of class time to work on the application. Now, what that means is about a two to one, more than a two to one ratio time in their favor. Um, for one, remember, I sent home 45 minutes of work. I'm bringing into class something like 70 to 85 minutes. And not only that, because I'm available to help and they're not seeking help from friends, less time is lost. So that homework time is really gathered is more than 70 to 85 minutes. We really have a bigger gain than that because they're not frantically calling friends at 11 o'clock at night. In fact, a parent emailed me and said, man, so you mean my clueless student is not going to be calling other clueless friends at 11 o'clock at night looking for help on homework? And that's the goal. If they're using their time wisely in class, I'm there to help them when they get stuck. And so again, that 45 minutes may seem like a lot, but hopefully you see it's, it's a definite win in the time favor for your kids. They still have to do those other things I mentioned, but it is still a much more effective and efficient way for your kids to learn. Just to give you an idea, uh, I saw my averages increase about two to 3% compared to the previous year's test. And here's what's really important. The median increased anywhere from five to a couple of tests, 8%. And it's because some of the B, low B students are the ones who get real discouraged. And this method helps them work through that discouragement. My kiddos loved the way I do flipped. 95% of my students preferred the flipped approach to learning. Um, if you have struggles with technology, I'm there to help. Uh, in addition to those people who do have home computers and internets, I can, if needed and have in the past, uh, burn them onto a DVD to be watched on a DVD player or a flash drive if you have access to a computer but not internet. Many of my kids watch them on phones. You definitely want to have a pretty extensive uh, data plan for that, but still. Um, they're welcome to come watch it in my room before or after school. The kids could have video watching parties and bring snacks if they want. Uh, anything we can do to be creative. Uh, the library is available. If you live in an apartment, many apartment complexes have a couple of computers available or they can make plans to go to a friend's house. There are a lot of ways we can make sure your child can access the direct teach piece which is now done at home. 
I know this has been a little lengthy, but I hope it's been thorough. That's probably why my videos are 45 minutes, because I try to be as thorough as possible. Now, if you have more questions, I would really love it if you would email me. Of course, you can call me, but I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, sometimes I don't see that light blinking on the phone, but I respond really quickly to email requests. And then if we need to set up an appointment or a phone call from there, we can. So again, thank you so much for allowing me to love your child through his or her journey of learning chemistry.